Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Okay, so a couple days ago, two guys came to my house at night when I was all by myself. Both of them looked like government, but they didn't have Australian accents, more like American accents. Weirder yet. And the only reason I didn't call the police is that they arrived with a single police car escort which didn't have sirens but had the lights flashing around. Just before they came up, and I know this since I was at the microwave, something tripped a switch and the power went off, but the power to the lights didn't turn off if that makes sense. When I got to the door they asked if I was a non. Not my name, but I'm going to use it as a placeholder. I said yes. Then they asked if they could ask me a few questions, I said sure, and went to step outside to talk to them. But then one of them said inside would be better and barged in. I obviously followed in, and as soon as I did the other one shut the front door behind me. This probably sounds pathetic, but these guys were probably about 187 centimeters each, about 6'1", and were extremely intimidating and emotionless, and I was somewhat scared at the time. Both of them were wearing sort of dark long coats, jackets and hats which no one would ever wear over here, and kept staring me down not blinking whenever I made eye contact. I'm also fairly sure they had weapons on them, and they both just continued to stare at me the whole time while we sat down. They started asking me about a sort of hunting accident or car accident thing which I drove past and stopped at last week, and told me they were investigating it. They didn't tell me what had happened, but sounds like there could have been a murder. That being said, all I saw was some disemboweled kangaroos and what looked like some sort of machinery that had fallen off a truck and been seriously damaged. When I was done looking, I think another car had arrived and I think they must have taken down my number plate. They asked me if I had taken any pictures of the scene and I said yes and that I would go get my phone. I went to my room, which is where I have a replica M9, which I was seriously thinking of grabbing at the time but thought it would be dumb to pull a fake gun on them. I go in and get my phone and am about to call my friend who doesn't live too far away to come over, when suddenly one of them just appears behind without making a sound, grabs my phone and says, Actually, we won't need this or the photos, thanks for your cooperation. Then puts my phone down on my desk. I escort them to the door and they leave. I sort of just stood there for about 30 seconds wondering what the hell had just happened, and then and then suddenly the power for the appliances came back on. When I went to call my friend, my phone wouldn't turn on. I've fixed lots of iPhones before, but something happened and the guy completely fried my phone. I've tried a new screen and battery so far and it won't connect to anything. Now these guys were like albinos or something. Neither of them had any freckles on them, which is almost impossible if you live here since the sun is so fierce. Both of them had sort of neutral but also kind of American movie accents, and no real distinguishable features except they were bald and I think must have had like really light blonde eyebrows, but it's hard to tell because the lamp where we sat had no power. All of this being said, these guys purposefully intimidated me, made subtle threats fried my phone and showed no ID or warrant or anything. Do I have a right to try and press charges or threaten a government, if they are government official for this kind of behavior? Sorry for the long post. This had been eating away at me all day. Does this shit fly in America? I'm only asking again because these guys were not Australian. If this actually happened, leave your house, stay with multiple friends, not just one, and contact the media and a lawyer immediately. They might be criminals or ACO, and you want to be screwing with neither if they're covering up a murder or something. Either way, your phone in combination with the police car might help as evidence. Was it a marked car or an unmarked one? If it was an unmarked one, that's a very big no-no if they're not police or Australian Security Intelligence Organization. I don't buy the albino bit unless you mean that they just didn't look suntanned as if they were from North Dakota or something. We have something called Sovereignty Mate. If the CIA is messing around on Australian soil, they can either disappear you and corrupt Shorten, or risk losing their only reliable ally in the Pacific. Lowell, if this is real and not some sci-fi BS, I guess I'll answer, no, that shit does not fly here, well, maybe with some bootlicking snowflakes. Here in America, we are armed and free. We will demand ID and a warrant to enter our homes. You should have made a backup of those pictures and a hard copy printed. Like I said before, it depends on if they were pansy snowflakes, though, as some people crumble to any badge and do not know or use their rights. I believe you, Anon. 
and you're probably not long for this world and are about to experience some bad things. These visits from men in black rarely end well for the person they visit. If they utilize pocket EMP devices, which exist and are cheap and easy to make, that could explain what happened to your phone. That or keeping a concealed magnet in their long coats would wipe the device and kill the data inside. This was an obvious data scrub. You need to go stay with family or friends. You need to go to the media. You absolutely must not allow yourself to be alone and vulnerable at all in the coming weeks. Change your routine. You may be in legitimate danger. I don't mean to sound like a hyperbolic schizo, but I don't want you to be the victim of a sudden self-termination or disappearance because you saw something you weren't meant to see. It is imperative that you heed my warning. You must go to the media and police. File an official complaint. Be prepared to defend yourself from abduction, not by aliens. Get your affairs in order. Visit a psychologist and have yourself declared sane. Eat out and do not trust your home groceries. Anon, you aren't crazy. You aren't alone. Keep that knowledge with you and never let them take you without a fight they have to clean up after. In keeping with slash K slash standards, shotgun, kukri, basic bug out bag, good boots, hydration bladder, and good familial friendly support to help you kick some men in black ass. A magnet doesn't do literally anything to a phone. Honestly, I was going to send photos to my girlfriend after talking when I got back to my car, but she said not to because she's got a thing with blood. I also already tried looking in iCloud, but it's not there. I'm going to try and get the phone fixed, but those two photos still don't fix or even help with my predicament. Okay, I wasn't expecting to end up getting these responses, but I'm going to go with my gut feeling and take your word with this. I'll make sure I meet up with the journalist friend tomorrow and push her to take up the story. The problem is I can't just bug out. I have work and if I suddenly don't turn up I will get fired and then I'll be in an even worse situation. I'll also ask a friend to come over and just be around tomorrow night, but he doesn't finish until 10 so he probably won't be here until like 11pm. I'll call the police station during my lunch break and hopefully find out what it was all about. As for the other stuff you said I can trust my groceries because I bought them before the visit and I'm obviously still alive. And as for a shotgun and kukri I really can't acquire either of those things, especially the shotgun. It's 1.30 a.m. here and I have work at 9 so I need to try and rest. I'll update the thread tomorrow when I get back home from work. As for this, like I said I can't turn my phone on so what you expect me to do, besides dead kangaroos on the side of the road, is not that unusual. I thought you would want to see a pic of the cement mixing thing. Here's a photo to prove it's me. I'll use it again tomorrow when I'm back. Sorry if bad quality I'm using my old iPhone 6 now. The groceries thing isn't for now. It's in the next few days. People who show no badges, offer no names, and barge into your house are not above dosing your groceries while you're at work. Pick related, don't let that be you. Just be safe. Get some cheap cameras that connect to your not dead phone via Wi-Fi. I don't know Aussie law regarding concealed knives, but having one is good for peace of mind. Paranoia won't help, but vigilance is a high virtue. Be alert, be calm, be prepared. Like they say in my neck of the woods, no falta un pendejo. Okay, I'm not sure if it is related, but my father used to work in the FBI. I overheard him talking with another FBI friend about something extremely similar and how it was bullshit they were able to get away with it and couldn't be prosecuted. Long story short, these men and black people have and will kill if they deem it necessary. The fact that you have reached out for help is extremely troubling and will have put you in a lot of danger. When I asked my father about these men I heard him talking about, he told me to forget what I heard because it was dangerous, and that's what you should have also done. Long story short, OP, you can't beat these people. Trying to go public will result in you self-terminating with a bullet to the back of the head. Keep a low profile and get off the grid, or you will die. Seriously though, trying asking X for help some of them have dealt with these people before. TLDR, do not call the police. LOL, that shit isn't real. Imagine actually believing this crap. There are movies based on this. There are books and television programs that expose the true stories of the MIB. You really think they killed everyone that read or watched any of them? Or anyone that made those media or were a part of their production? Stop posting this shit crazy is contagious. Discrediting media is easier and more effective than killing people. It's Wet Ops. Watch the K. Griggs interview. Anon, do as everyone else said and keep your mouth shut.
As for everyone in this thread, I'd suggest you do the same. Don't speak of this to anyone. You are all in grave danger along with your families. OP, don't post the kangaroo pic if you know what's good for you. All of our lives are on the line. As long as we say nothing, we should be good. Report this thread as off-topic and get it deleted. It's for everyone's own good. Sounds like normal FBI and CIA stuff. They saw a civilian experiencing an out-of-bounds event and wanted to know if it changed you psychologically or not. You seem sound of mind, so they let off because you're not crazy. People start acting weird when they see death, even if it's an animal. If they saw you taking pictures, even just for the lulls, it might have freaked them out. Okay, so quick update. I called up the local cop shop during my lunch break and I'm regretting it. It could be nothing, but they said that yes, a police car had been outside my house, but it wasn't one of theirs. It was federal police, not state police. They said that they would need to transfer me because they didn't have any records on it. I got transferred, waited for maybe like three minutes, then got a hold of someone in the federal police. I told him the whole story and he sounded kind of concerned. Said he would have to put me on hold for two minutes while he got the file and found out what happened. Then I ended up being on hold for over 20 minutes, then got hung up on. I call the local PD, explain what happened, saying I thought my connection cut, and they said they would transfer me again. I get back to the federal police, explain what happened, and they say, I'll transfer you back to the officer you were speaking with. Get back on the phone with them and he just says, is this Anon, who lives at my address? I say yes, do a quick information verification with him. Then he just says, I'm afraid I wasn't able to find anything, sorry for the inconvenience, and hangs up on me. I have been unable to keep my nerves in check all day. This incident has seriously shaken me up. I ended up meeting with my journalist friend after leaving work three hours early with my boss super pissed. She said she would definitely run the story and start making some calls as soon as we finished, and that a lot of people would find it interesting. Then I just get a call 20 minutes ago from her telling me she was told directly by the head editor that she was not to run or even research the story, and that she needed to be in his office first thing in the morning to talk about the findings of her workplace drug test, despite the fact she has never taken any substance except alcohol. I read through some of the stuff you guys were saying when I was asleep, and I really don't know what to do at this point. I got home this afternoon and my door wasn't locked even though I clearly remember locking it when I left for work. I also catch a bus into work each day, and when I tried to start my car to go over to my girlfriend's place, the battery was dead for some reason. I'm using the same SIM card out of my broken phone. I honestly feel like every move I make is being followed and I'm being spied on somehow. I'm going to get rid of my SIM card after today. I've asked my friend to bring me over a brand new burner SIM after he finishes work and comes over. The irony of it all is I honestly once made fun of people who believed in UFOs or MIB, but I can't explain it away as anything else other than MIB at this point. I've been able to get a week off work using my accumulated sick leave, but my boss is super pissed. The current plan is to get out of here tomorrow and go in a woods for a week completely secluded and away from everything, get the photos back and upload them everywhere I possibly can move my shitty security cam thing to the front porch immediately so I can record these guys if they come back and do everything in my power to expose what has happened. I'm not going to let these people push me around and get away with it. What are they going to do? Attack me. It would cause an international shitstorm if they did. On a side note, thank you all for your suggestions. I honestly could really use a friend right now who has experience with this. So as some of you have said, I'm going to start looking at this as a MIB incident and see if anyone on X can help or might know if these people are actually dangerous. Wish me luck slash K slash I'm not going to go quietly or be quiet. Cars are not working so I'm walking down to the shops now to buy what I need for my bug out kit. Also going to eat dinner out after what someone said about being careful about food, especially since my door was unlocked. I'll post a link to the slash X slash thread to keep you all updated when I get back from the shops. I'm also going to try and sketch what I remember the main guy looking like. OP. If what you say is true, then just go stay with your parents for a while. Make sure that you're never left home alone. If you fear potential use of violence to be used against you, do not try to expose these guys to the public either. Just think of the following week as sorta of a week-long vacation. If you have the money, buy a security camera that you can place outside your home and watch it from your computer or cell phone anywhere at any time. When you return home, return with a family member or a friend. Check all closets and potential occupied hiding spaces. Throw out all food and medicine when you return home as well. 
From this point forward, if anybody asks you or brings any of this up outside your family and inner circle of close friends, don't tell them anything about what happened at your home. To them, you're just another clueless normal person, got that? However, inform your close friends and family about this and clearly, and I mean clearly inform them, you are not the type to self-terminate whatsoever. Tell them that whatever happened at your home that day stays between you and them. Avoid driving as much as you can for a while also. Be aware of your surroundings always. Okay, got back from shops with what I could get from my bug out bag. Can't drive at night because too many kangaroos on the road. Friend is coming over around 11 tonight. Then first thing in the morning we are going to drive down to New South Wales with his ute. Family has a small rural property out there. No reception or power but has 222. Rifles and ammo. I can't afford to be down there for more than a week and he has to be back by the 6th. For those who are screwing with me on here, whatever, I don't care for those of you who have helped. Thanks, I genuinely appreciate it. Today and yesterday was quite stressful. And I think now that I definitely am in over my head, so I'm going to go for the bug out meme and get rid of my sim. For the rest of tonight, I'm going to pack and see if slash x slash knows how to deal with these people. What rights you have, what questions to refuse to answer, etc. I drew up this pic in Microsoft Paint the best I could. It kind of looks like the guy, but it's still off. He was probably only mid-30s, not 60 like in the pic, but eyes are pretty close. I don't really know many bush skills, but I'm taking food and water plus candles and stuff. If anyone has any thoughts on what I should take with me, drop a reply here or an X. I'll try and upload the pics when I get back and have been to Apple. Thanks. My god, y'all gave this man some of the worst advice I expected better from slash K slash. First of all, do not bug out and go in a woods or to any rural areas. You are asking to get killed. You don't think you're going to get tracked down by forward-looking infrared slash drones, canines? These are professionals. Bugging out into the wild, you will get buried anywhere you're standing. Listen, what you really need to do is leave with your friend and head towards the nearest large city. On the way, stop somewhere to get door stoppers. Make sure they can't get kicked in from the other side of the door. And air horns, alarms. Also, some clothes out of your style and sunglasses, hoodies, hats, anything. Stay in a fairly cheap yet still populated hotel. You want the walls to be built cheaply with the least amount of insulation between rooms. Having bodies around will keep you alive. You want witnesses. Move with people and time what you're doing. At night, use door stoppers at your hotel door and rig your air horns and alarms to go off immediately when you are awoken. Think about your next moves carefully. Of course, this is all assuming you're telling the truth. I can't just stay at my house. I feel like a sitting duck. Besides, I won't be by myself, I'll have my friend with me. I didn't tell you to stay at your house. I said to go with your friend towards the nearest large city and stay at a cheap hotel that's fairly populated with door stoppers and air horns. Alarms that you can trip if you are awoken immediately. Watching eyes keeps you alive. Don't go stay somewhere rural, that's way too easy for them to silence you and whoever else you get involved. Then he went on slash x slash for advice. All right, I'm crawling back out of bed for this one. Yes, withdraw money immediately from ATMs. Be quick before your account becomes frozen if it isn't already. Also, I'm going to tell you right now, do not waste your time researching legalities. Listen, there are US government agencies that can and will do whatever they want under covert operations. These can range from doing coin ops to tactical espionage, and of course, low profile assassinations. We send professionals to carry out a very wide variety of missions as we see fit. Bro, you're about to get Jason Bourne. Quit wasting your time looking up legalities. If this is real, you're in for a rough time. Okay, seriously, I can't take my stuff without a car, and I don't have a car until my friend gets here. His shift just finished and I have been texting and trying to call for the past 30 minutes. Okay, I swear I heard something outside a minute ago as well, so I'm packing a small backpack with just the very essentials. I really don't know if I should just jump the neighbor's fence and run until morning then find a payphone. My priority right now is making it through the next hour not posting to 4chan. I'll update everyone when my friend arrives. Calm down, man. Just wait a reasonable amount of time for your friend to arrive. In the meantime, find the sharpest knife, not too big, just regular sized, and hold it with the blade facing down and towards you. Think of having your arm effectively being turned into a sickle and hold out in a tight spot in your house with a good corner without exposing yourself to any openings such as windows, etc. The best spot you can make do with. Make sure you hold the knife that way.
Just in case if you swing downwards and miss, you can pull your arm towards yourself and still rake them and can make cuts on recovery. If your friend doesn't show up and you haven't gotten into any scuffles, then run. Remember, you can also jump trains, just watch out for security boarding and when it stops. I have been doing this. I'm not mentally ill, I'm not a schizo. I have a job and a partner. I'm not going to take a phone with me at all going to hide them. But before I do, does anyone know how to fix a iPhone X which has been EMP'd or something? I have all the tools and I'm good at repairs. I really want to upload those photos tonight because I feel like the phone is going to be stolen when I'm gone. Why is this a good decision? Op, you won't be coming back. Cool story, but I expect the follow-up to be a lame-as-hell spook cover story claiming to be you after they disappear you. BTW MIBs used to stalk farmers after cow mutilations in the U.S. If I were you, I'd stay in town with a gun and sit on the porch waiting. To reset an iPhone from electrical interference, do as you would with a CMOS battery and a desktop computer. Remove the battery, both if it's an iPhone X, and hold the power button on for 15 seconds. Removes all currents in the circuitry. 11 o'clock. Okay, it's just past 11 and my friend should be here and I can hear someone outside near the stairs. But they are not saying anything. I have this churning gut feeling it's not him. But I don't know if it was surely he would say something. I'm going to pretend I'm not here. Please someone screen cap this. I haven't made any preparations for if something were to happen to me tonight. What do I do next? Well, if the currents are cleared from the MOBO, just put the batteries back in and restart it. You power it up and upload that shit ASAP. I'll look into that now. I'm going to quietly go out the front and see if I can grab the SD card out of the crappy camcorder. I need to know if that was my friend. Okay, I'm actually hyperventilating and my eyes are swelling up trying to be as quiet as possible. My friend was supposed to be here 15 minutes ago at the latest and I haven't been able to get in contact with him. That looks like a gun in his hand and is the guy I drew the one who fried the iPhone. I need help right now, I can see a car right out the front. I can't leave. I just had to turn on a personal hotspot. I think my switchboard just got overloaded. I just lost power to my appliances again and my laptop's not charging. There are three of them at the back door, I don't know what to do. I don't want this. They're about to break down the door if I don't open it. I'm going to beg. I'm coming back. I live at Port Douglas. Well, no MD5 matches, nor Google or Yandex, so it's happening. I've been following this from the start. Op was posting in K to find out about the legality of what happened. Realizes that what he thought was just some gruesome accident was something more, and MIB had targeted him, PD already going silent on him. Op was spied on through the tech in his home and on him. MIB stopped him from getting his story out to the media. Op gets visited by one MIB at front door, Op post original pic, Op says three MIB come to back door, say he has to go and face them, thinking he will die if he doesn't comply. Op's words are a last call for helping telling us where he is, a few minutes after OP has left. The originals and only the originals start getting deleted and a ton of misinformation pops up everywhere. Spookiest part inbound. Been following the news around that area relentlessly. Story pops up. Unidentified young man drowned in the floods last night. Can't find anything else about anyone dying during these floods. Story was only about 40 minutes old. F5 because bottom of page won't load. It's fucking gone. I'm starting to unironically think this isn't safe. I'm going to upload the original. What I am almost certain is the original, but two people keep saying is a shoop. And then I'm clearing my browser cookies and going offline for a week. Download the photo and do the same. The link is four years old and dead. There isn't a legality. They operate under no loose ends. No joke, I've been there. And you might hear a whispering mention of MIB, but you never see anything of substance. Your only hope is to gather as many people as possible to witness your safety. You do not want to go into the wilderness. That's what they wanted. Stay at home or where people are going to be aware of your presence. If you lack people, live stream yourself to safety. You could have just looked the other way, but it's too late for that. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time.
remember to check out the Odyssey page in the description for a second archive of the channel's videos. There's also a Rumble archive as a backup.